Hi everyone, Tracy here, the self-proclaimed humorous tutor. In my defense, that Twitter handle was available, so it, it's done now, that's too late. Anyway, thank you for joining me, and in today's video we'll be having a chat about heart sounds and abnormal heart sounds, which are called the heart murmurs. Yes, we have sank to the level of knock-knock jokes, but we're just going to move right past that onto the next slide. Alright, so before we talk about abnormal heart sounds, I think we should first understand the normal heart sounds. So the normal heart sounds are lub and dub, called the first and second heart sound respectively. The lub, the first heart sound, is caused by the closure of the atrioventricular valves, and the second heart sound is caused by the closure of the semilunar valves. So just to remind ourselves, the atrioventricular valves sit between the atria and the ventricles on the right and the left side of the heart, and on the right we have the tricuspid, and the left we have the mitral. And the semilunar valves sit at the base of the great vessels. So at the base of the pulmonary trunk, we will find the pulmonary valve, and at the base of the aorta, we will find the aortic valve. The lub and the dub should be nice and clear, distinct sounds, and we shouldn't hear too much more in between the first and the second heart sound. These heart sounds, the normal ones, just a clear first and second, can be represented on a cardiogram, which is just a representation of the sound waves when listening to the heart. And just a quick reminder, and we'll tie this in, that one cardiac cycle is composed of a systolic and a diastolic phase, so a contraction and a relaxation. So, Let's just talk a normal, healthy heart at the moment, and let's understand what the valves are doing during each phase of the cardiac cycle. So starting with systole, when the ventricles contract, this causes a pressure difference between the atria and the ventricles, and this causes the atrioventricular valves to snap shut. Also, the point of contracting the ventricles is to eject the blood out of the heart, and so that will push the blood up the pulmonary trunk and up the aorta, and therefore the semilunar valves will be open. So let's just keep this in mind and keep that in a tabulated form off to the right there. Now that's systole done, how about diastole when the heart is relaxing? So that during the relaxation phase, blood is going to exit the atria and fill the ventricles, and therefore our atrioventricular valves will be open. However, the backflow of the blood through the great vessels is going to snap the semilunar valves shut and therefore we have our AV valves closed during systole and open during diastole and our semilunar valves open during systole and closed during diastole. So let's incorporate the phases of the cardiac cycle within the cardiogram and therefore we understand that the first heart sound correlates with the beginning of systole and the second heart sound correlates with the beginning of diastole. Now we understand what should happen in a normal healthy heart and whether the valves will be shut or open during systole or diastole. From there, we can now understand abnormal heart sounds. Abnormal heart sounds can be a cause of two things, stenosis or regurgitation or insufficiency. Stenosis meaning narrowing, whereas regurgitation within the word means backflow. We need to remember that these valves exist to maintain unidirectional blood flow through the heart. And so there are two places that this can go wrong. It can either make it difficult for that blood to travel in the direction that it needs to go, such as in the case of a stenotic or a narrowed valve, or if these valves aren't doing their jobs in such a way that it allows for blood flow in the opposite direction, such as a regurgitating or an insufficient valve. We also need to remember that the heart works as a double pump, the right and the left side associated with the pulmonary and the systemic circulation respectively. Because the left side is associated with such a high pressure system, pathologies of the valves are much more likely to occur in the mitral and the aortic valves, the ones found on the left side, whilst the right side valves, the tricuspid and the pulmonary, are less common. The rest of the video is really about understanding the heart sounds in left heart valvular disease.
So we've got the two left heart valves, the mitral and the aortic, and we've also got two types of valvular abnormalities. Stenosis, which is a narrowing, which means there's issues getting blood to flow the way it should, and regurgitation, where the valve is allowing blood to flow the way it shouldn't. So let's work our way down the list of valvular abnormalities on the left in the table. Starting with aortic stenosis, we would expect the aortic valve to be open during systole, and the first heart sound is caused by the closing of the mitral. So there's nothing wrong with the mitral here, however there is an issue getting blood through the stenotic aortic valve. So we would get quite a lot of volume from this blood trying to push through a narrowed opening. Therefore, in the cardiogram, the sound wave representing the first heart sound is going to be very abnormal, whilst everything during diastole is working the way it should. Moving on to aortic regurgitation then, during systole, when everything's contracting, the mitral valve will snap shut as per normal, and the aortic valve will be open to allow blood through to the aorta as per normal. So, first heart sound, all good. However, during diastole, when the ventricle is relaxing, it should be the snapping shut of the aortic valve that causes the second heart sound. However, because this aortic valve is regurgitating and allowing backflow, we would expect to hear an abnormal second heart sound, where we would hear this blood trickling through this incompetent valve, thus representing non-unidirectional blood flow. Moving now on to mitral stenosis. During systole, that precious differential is going to snap the mitral valve shut as per normal and allow blood through the aortic valve as per normal. However, during diastole, when blood is flowing from the atria to the ventricles and flowing through a narrowed mitral valve, that's when we would hear an abnormal heart sound. What's important to remember here is that filling of the ventricles is largely a passive process. So we would still hear the normal shutting of the aortic valve. However, it's towards the end of diastole where the atria actually contract to eject that extra volume of blood to the ventricles. And so we would hear this abnormal heart sound towards the end of diastole when the atria are contracting to push blood through the stenotic mitral valve. Moving now on to mitral regurgitation. Remembering that the first heart sound represents the beginning of systole and is heard through the closing of the atrioventricular valves. So, mitral being one of them. It's the pressure difference between the atria and the ventricles that would normally snap the mitral valve closed. However, because it's incompetent in such a way that it's allowing this backflow to occur, we don't get a clean first heart sound. And because this backflow is occurring during contraction, we would expect to hear this blood flow through the regurgitating valve throughout all of systole until diastole occurs, whereby we hear the normal heart sound caused by the closure of the semilunar valves. And that's it. I hope now that the cardiogram on the left makes sense with what we've drawn and scribbled in on the right. I think it's much better to understand why the cardiogram is the way it is and to relate an abnormal structure to a clinical sign that we can actually detect. I hope that this video did foster better understanding of normal and some common abnormal heart sounds. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time.